from the nails. Yay! <laughs> Good morning, church family. Blessings from Susan. Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family, from Paul. And Helene. Good morning, church, from David. And Jennifer. Good morning and welcome to Hamilton Road Baptist. We're so glad that you've joined us for this broadcast. Wherever you're sitting and whoever you are, we are so glad you're here. Today we're going to begin a new series in Matthew's Gospel entitled The First Steps of the King. We're going to follow the early ministry life of Jesus. A little later we're going to hear from people in our church about the difference knowing Jesus makes to them. I'm going to hear about an exciting new opportunity on Sunday evenings as well. But before we do that, I'm going to hand over to Jonathan, who's going to lead our songs. I'm going to read just one verse from Matthew, which is the words of Jesus, who says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And that invitation to come to Jesus is something which is carried into our uh, first hymn this morning as it invites us to rejoice in Jesus, talks about Jesus the risen King, and invites us to unite in praise to him as together we meet for this service this morning, even though we're apart. Um, let's remember that we can rejoice in Christ, whether the, we're the people who like the mornings, those who are weeping through the night, those who are struggling in the fight, those who are telling of their victories and battles won. These words of this song are great for us all. Come, people of the risen King, and unite to bring him praise. to 
Well, it's a big hello from Hamilton Road Baptist Church because we want to introduce to you a brand new teaching series on Sunday nights at seven o'clock. We've called it Deeper Into The Word because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to dive into the riches and the treasures of God's Word. In this series, we're going to be looking at the Sermon on the Mount. It's the greatest sermon that has ever been preached, where Jesus Christ, the Prince of Preachers, sits and addresses his disciples and summon the crowd and tells them about kingdom living, the way of Jesus. That's going to be our great theme, what it means to be kingdom people, following in the teachings and the way of Jesus. So we would be delighted if you join with us on Sunday nights at seven o'clock. You may need to bring your Bible or a notebook so that we open up this Bible study together so that we might be better and more truer followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking forward to joining with you on Sundays at seven. We asked a few people what knowing Jesus means to them, and here's what they said. Knowing Jesus means I have my Saviour to trust in every minute of the day. He simply asks me to put my hand in his, and he will lead me and guide me and teach me many lessons as we journey home together. Uh, For me, it's knowing Jesus is um, just amazing. It's um, all about uh, knowing that you can uh, turn to him in any situation that you're in and relying on him to help you through it. How can I express what knowing Jesus means to me in a few short words? The most succinct summary that uh, I know comes from a prayer letter of a dear friend, Ken Needham, He said this, this year I've been emphasizing the simplicity of the essential gospel. One becomes a Christian by personally inviting Jesus to live and reign at the core of one's being. Living like a Christian simply means letting him out to connect with everyone you meet. Having the Saviour inside fills my emptiness and purifies my filthiness. Letting him out transforms my aimlessness and transcends my uselessness. That's what knowing Jesus means to me. Hello, Um, we were asked to say what Jesus means to us, absolutely everything. He is hope, he is light at the end of the darkest tunnel. He is gracious, compassionate, He is full of loving kindness towards all he has made. His love is so incredible. I can't begin to explain it to you. But I'm so very, very glad that it's true. Just God bless you and help you to find the same hope that I was able to find when I was at the absolute depths of hopelessness. I was in a Mary Brett, but he rescued me and he'll do that for you. Amen. Hello boys and girls. Uh, Well, as you can see, you've caught me getting ready for a tea party. One of the things I've really missed during this time is having my friends round for cups of tea and buns and a good old chat together. And uh, so it's one of the things I'm really looking forward to um, over the next little while. I wonder what sort of things you're looking forward to. What are you getting ready for doing with your friends? Maybe you're thinking about outdoors, maybe in the garden, um, getting out your bats and balls, footballs and things and and having uh, some fun playing games with your friends again outside. Or maybe whenever you're able to have your friends indoors, uh, maybe getting the munchies out, the popcorn out, having time to, to sit and chat and catch up, maybe watch a movie together. These are things that we're beginning to think about and we're getting ready for doing again. And our story today uh, from the Bible is about a man called John the Baptist. And right at the beginning of the New Testament, he uh, came to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus was going to begin his ministry of teaching and preaching. And John the Baptist was the man who came uh, to prepare the way 
for Jesus doing that. He came with a message to the people back then and it's the same message for us today and that message is that we need to get ready for Jesus the rescuer. Jesus was coming back then to rescue the people from their sinful ways and show them the way to God. And the message is still the same for us today, that we also need to get ready for Jesus, our rescuer coming. That's the most important thing that we can be ready for. And John the Baptist then went on to say that to be ready, we also then need to repent. If we repent, then we can be able to be with Jesus. And repent really just means that we need to be sorry for our sin, change from our sinful ways, and then live our lives that are pleasing to God. Jesus is our rescuer, and we need to repent to him. And then John the Baptist goes on to say that if we are uh, sorry, for our sins, then we can rejoice. The Bible tells us that when we are part of God's family, we are saved from our sins and we can rejoice in what the Lord Jesus has done for us. So we can rejoice in Jesus, our rescuer. We can live our lives for him, uh, with him guiding us and leading us and be part of his family here on earth. And then one day we can live forever with him in heaven. So I really trust and pray today, boys and girls, that as we get ready for lots of things over the coming months again, that we are also ready for our Lord Jesus, that we repent from our sinful ways and that then we can rejoice here on earth and in heaven with our Lord Jesus for. Good morning, everyone. It is time now for our scripture reading. 
and we invite you to take your Bibles and turn to St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3. And we're going to read together the first 12 verses. So it's Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Judea and Jerusalem and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins, and they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptising, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit, he will cut down and throw it into the fire. I baptise you with water for repentance. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I am, whose sandals I am not even fit to carry. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is the word of the Lord. Morning everybody, let's just pray. Lord, we just thank you for this new day. Thank you that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for our church family who are listening this morning, for each and every household that's represented. And we thank you, Lord, for those people that are listening that maybe aren't part of our church, but most very welcome. And we just pray for them, Lord. And above all, God, we come before you and we thank you, Lord, for you. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy and your forgiveness. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. That it should have been us and for our sins, but you chose to send your son to die for us. And we just thank you, God. This morning, Lord, we'll be reminded about John the Baptist. Lord, and we thank you for um, the encouragement as we read about men like him in the Bible. Thank you, Lord, that he wasn't afraid to go out into the wilderness and to speak about you and about what you have done for us. Lord, let it be an encouragement to us this morning to no matter what season we're in, and particularly if we think we're in a wilderness at the moment, and maybe the wilderness with um, the situation with the pandemic, that we still would use this opportunity, Lord, to speak to others about you, and um, to encourage each other, and to let them know of the good news, Lord, of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for anybody that may be listening this morning, and doesn't know you, Father, I pray, Lord, that they would respond to you. Father, I pray that they would recognise, Lord, that there's no greater time than now, Lord, to, to acknowledge that you died on the cross for them, Lord, and to come before you, Lord, and to simply ask for forgiveness and to ask you into their hearts. Father God, this is the best news that anyone could ever um, experience or hear and father god we just pray lord that that the word would just go forth this morning lord and would speak into hearts father thank you so much for loving us thank you so much for 
for dying for us. Father, thank you so much for forgiving us, Lord. And Father God, I pray, Lord, as we go through the today, that you would continue to go with us, Lord, reminding us, God, of all that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. It was Elton John, the very famous singer and songwriter who penned these words and later sang them. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. I wonder, would you agree with that this morning? I would say, yes, it is. And I would say that it has been that way from the beginning of human history. God, I believe, created Adam and Eve in the garden. And when Eve, the first woman, succumbed to the temptation of Satan, the serpent, in the garden. God came and he confronted her and he said, Eve, what have you done? And rather than saying sorry to God in the Garden of Eden for her sin, she blamed the serpent. She said it was a serpent that tricked me. And then when God confronted Adam, the first man in the Garden of Eden, rather than Adam saying sorry to God, he simply blamed the woman, but it was the woman that you gave me. And from that moment on, every human that has been born into the world, like you and me listening today, we are blame shifters. Rather than wanting to say sorry to our family that we have hurt, or our friends that we have hurt, or our co-workers, or our colleagues, and definitely to God, we really struggle to say sorry. And in our story today, in Matthew chapter 3, we meet a man called John the Baptist. And he was sent by God into the world to encourage and to challenge people like you and me to say sorry to God. Because John the Baptist really had one message he had this message that people needed to say sorry, that people like you and me needed to repent. Now you might say, well, what does the word repent mean? I've never heard it before. Quite simply, it really just means to say sorry. It means like you, if you're on a journey and you go down the wrong lane and GPS speaks to you in your car and says, you need to make a U-turn. You need to go back in a different direction. And really, that's what this word repentance means. It means for you and me who have been living a life where we've been rebelling against God and we have never said sorry to him for our sin, is that we would utter that little word to God. Sorry. And so John the Baptist helps us today in our reading in Matthew chapter 3 to answer this question, how can I get into heaven? How can I get into heaven? Well, listen to Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And the first thing we need to do is this. Listen to the greatest man pointing you to Jesus. Listen to the greatest man pointing you to Jesus. Now, some of you have never heard of John the Baptist before, but you've maybe heard about Jesus. And you might say, John, surely Jesus was the greatest man. Well, Jesus was the greatest God-man. Jesus, in a way that blows our wildest imaginations, was truly God and truly man. But John the Baptist was just a man. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, of those born of women, there is none greater than John the Baptist. So I encourage you to listen to what this great man has to say. And what does he say to us in Matthew chapter 3, verse 1? He encourages us to listen to Jesus. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. John was a radical. He didn't live too far away from Jerusalem with the city elites and the religious leaders. He was a radical. He lived out in the wilderness with the scorpions and the snakes. But he wanted to challenge everybody about living a life of self-indulgence and self-satisfaction. He wanted to challenge people to live a life focused on a saviour who would be Jesus. And so could I challenge you today through his message, declared many hundreds of years ago, that you might also look to Jesus. Because listen to how the crowds responded to his ministry in those days. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and the region about the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Isn't this amazing? Can you see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people flocking from the capital city of Jerusalem to go and see this radical man out in the Judean wilderness, baptizing people because they had repented of their sin. Could I encourage you today to start this journey Will you too will say sorry to Jesus. And so you need to listen to John the Baptist, who was the greatest man who pointed you and me to Jesus. Our glory and our prize. 
But secondly, we need to learn about our greatest opponent. We need to learn about our greatest opponent, which is our own pride. It was pride that kept Adam and Eve from saying sorry to God in the Garden of Eden. And it is pride that keeps you and me from saying sorry to Jesus today. And so the Gospel of Matthew here gives us an illustration of a group of people who refused to say sorry to Jesus because of their own pride. Verse 7. But when John the Baptist saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruit in keeping, and here comes this word again, with repentance. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious leaders of their day. They believed that if they kept all of the law, and if they lived a, a life of conformity to God on the outside, then they would get into heaven. They had an outward religion, but no relationship with Jesus. It was pride that kept them from saying sorry to God. And I pray today that it, your pride would not keep you from saying sorry to God. Today, God is not looking for a people who just have an outward religiosity. He wants to transform your heart. He wants to transform your life. He wants to forgive you of your sin. But the first thing that you and me need to do is we need to say sorry. That we cannot throw a ladder up to heaven and through our own works and through our own righteousness and through our own strength and through our own morality that we can climb our way up to heaven. No, the truth of the good news about Jesus is that he has thrown a ladder down from heaven and he has climbed down into this world in his incarnation when he was born as a human baby who would ultimately end up on the cross for your sin and for mine. It was pride that would keep these religious leaders from Jesus and I pray that your pride and mine won't keep us from Jesus. Because there's a day of judgment coming and, and John speaks about that in verse 10. Even now the axe is at the root of the tree. Every tree therefore that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. There's that word again. But he, Jesus, who's coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, but, but his winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with an unquenchable fire. John is saying that when, when Jesus comes, everyone will have an opportunity to say sorry to God for their sin. But there's a day coming when that opportunity will cease. And that the results will come in of those that have said sorry to God. That those who have repented of their sin have access to the kingdom of heaven. But those who haven't, there will be dire consequences. For those that have said sorry to God because of what Jesus has done on the cross, heaven has opened up for them. This kingdom of heaven where there'll be no more sin or suffering or hardship, or death, or viruses, or loss of job, or employment, or heartache. No, the Bible says the whole old order of things will have passed away, and the Lord Jesus Christ will make everything new. That's how outstanding and amazing heaven is. But for those who have not said sorry to God, for those who have not repented of their sin. John the Baptist says that there will be dark consequences. It says the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is speaking of the place of hell where people go who have not responded to the love and the grace and the compassion and the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus. I urge you today, don't let your pride keep you from saying sorry to Jesus for your sin. 
There's a third thing then that we need to acknowledge, not just that we need to listen to John the Baptist, the greatest man who points us to Jesus, not just that we need to learn about our greatest opponent, which is pride that will keep us from Jesus. But thirdly, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, we need to let the good news about Jesus, the greatest news, transform our heart because Jesus did come and listen to what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Here comes this word again. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus did come. Jesus did die. Jesus was buried in a tomb. Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day. Jesus did appear to over 500 people after his resurrection from the dead. Jesus did ascend to be with his father 40 days after his resurrection. Jesus Christ is alive today. And can I tell you, this is outstanding news. This is the greatest news that you could ever hear. That the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That today you listening to this broadcast can be sitting in your house and you can say sorry to God. That you can repent of your sin and your law breaking and all of the things that you have done in your entire life that shame you even to this day. And Jesus comes and he cleanses those things. While he cannot remove all the consequences of our sin in the past, he gives us a new start. He opens up a new chapter that if you believe in him, if you trust in his name, you can receive salvation today. You can be part of the kingdom of heaven. That's how you get there. You say sorry to God. You repent of your sin. And you believe that when Jesus Christ died on the cross just outside Jerusalem many hundreds of years ago, and that when he cried out on the cross, it is finished, that he paid the price for your sin and for mine. Today, sorry is the hardest word. But can I encourage you today, if you do say sorry to God, and you repent of your sin, the greatest thing you will ever do, that you will have access right now today to the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to hand back to our team who are going to lead us in our closing song. Our last song today is a variation on an old hymn that's much loved right across the world. It continues that theme of the transforming power of Jesus. Uh, the writer says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Once was blind, but now I see. It's the song Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
thank you for joining us this morning and to everybody who has taken part. Don't forget to join us this evening at 7 p.m. for our Deeper Into the Word series where we'll be in the Sermon on the Mount. And we do hope that you have encountered Jesus afresh today. As John the Baptist pointed towards him, as we have sought to point you towards him, our hope and prayer is that you would go towards Jesus this morning. So let us pray as we close. Father God, thank you for the faithful life and ministry of John the Baptist, who made the way for Jesus to come, who pointed people to him to repent of their sin and to get ready for Jesus. Father, thank you that Jesus did then come and he did live the perfect life and die the death that we should have died and rose again victorious. And Father, would you help us all to encounter the kingship of Jesus afresh today. Father, even for the first time, Father, would we acknowledge and bow the knee to King Jesus. So Father, be with us as we go. Help us to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And have a good day. Thank you.